Hey guys, I'm Rhonda Draculis. It's Tuesday night and we're live. Welcome everybody. And we're gonna have fun tonight. I'm are gonna we? do a, yes, of course we are. We always have fun. I need to have fun because I've had a heck of a day. Is it Friday yet? So tonight we're gonna be doing a beautiful marble that incorporates some really pretty earth tones and a secret sauce that I have not used in a long time. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's one of my very, very favorite um, highlights, I guess, to use, and it's so much fun. So grab yourself a cold one, because I have one, and enjoy the next hour or so. All righty. Say hello, give love to all my moderators. Actually, I think tonight it's going to be Vamp and Clara. Uh, Erica is in Colorado. How dare her? She's skiing, having a good time. So uh, give some love to my moderators. They're amazing. And, of course, the man of the hour, Mr. Kenny Draculis. Everybody say hello. Give him what up, what up? some love. All righty. My favorite part of the week, guys. Uh, it's stressful getting everything ready for this live, but I absolutely love being with you and sharing and getting your feedback. I just feel like you guys are all family. I really, really do. I do want you to do me a favor. If you're new to this channel and you've never joined one of our lives, please let us know. Drop us a line, say hello, and tell us where you're from. I do have a shout out tonight. <clears throat> a um, excuse me, a, a guy called me today, had some questions and about the UTC, some mixing questions, and his name was Sal. So I don't know if Sal from New York is watching, but if he is, everybody show him some love and welcome Sal. I really enjoyed our conversation today. Okay, so let's get started because this resin has been sitting in a cup for 20 minutes, so let's get going. Alrighty, so what we're going to do tonight, we're using the art coat. We're going to be pouring over a white painted substrate. This is MDF, and we have prepped it by rounding over our edges with a three-quarter inch roundover bit. And the reason we do that is to help that epoxy roll over and not um, get surface tension right on those edges. We've painted it with two coats of our stone coat countertop epoxy uh, paint, no ammonia. So you only have to let that paint off gas for about four hours. If you use latex paint, you need to give it a good 24 hours. So here we go. Here's the colors that we're going to use. I sent Clara the links. She's going to provide the links for you guys. All of these products are available on my website. Uh, the only one that we are out, but we have a big order coming, is our uh, Color Passion Beach Sand. So here's the colors we're going to use. Color Passion Beach Sand. Didn't you just say that? I did, but I was, hey, don't start it this early in the show. Don't start it. So our Color Passion Beach Sand is, I said it again. <laughs> hey, is that beach sand? Hey, I'm this just is... wanting to know. How many <laughs> times are you going to say beach sand? I don't know, but every time I say it, I'm going to take a drink. How okay, about that? Wow. Um, okay, so the beach sand is quite um, quickly becoming my favorite color because it's just enough of that off white um, to just be, it blends with everything. And I absolutely love it. By color passion. Another color passion is our um, beige stone. The beige stone is really pretty. It's a little bit darker, um, kind of a neutral color, and I really like that. I got black something on here, so oh, no. that's all right. We'll just cover it up. With all right. White. With white. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're going to say beach sand. Uh, beach sand. We cover it with beach sand. All righty. White opaque dye and those of you that have been watching for a while, you know I love to do this with my white. I make white very opaque. We call that whole milk. 
Alrighty, then we're going to come in and we're going to take that white and literally this is how I do it. I dip my stick in there and I put it into clear. I mix it up and now we have skim milk. Alrighty, so we have whole milk and skim milk, opaque white and translucent white if you want to go there. All right, so that's that. Then the last thing, my favorite, is the Resin Art Shooting Star. Now, some of you guys may know this as um, Milky Way. It used to be called Milky Way. And I want Kenny to zoom in here and show you guys what this is. It reminds me almost of freeze-dried coffee. It's, 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 a, it's a, not a, really a powder. I would say it's a dry paste, if that makes sense, like a freeze-dried paste. And it absolutely melts. The minute you put that in resin, it melts. Kind of like Dippin' Dots? Like, but, ooh, Dippin' Dots. My favorite, too. But look at this, y'all. It is stunning. Stunning, stunning. I don't know if y'all can see that, but oh my gosh, it is gorgeous. Alrighty, then we've got <clears throat> some clear. And you guys know I love to use clear to create depth in our piece. Alrighty, so here we go. Alright, so I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to start off with my darkest color because I kind of want to bury that color down. I don't want that to just be on the top. All right, so we're going to come in with our beige, and I'm just going to put kind of blobs down. I'm not going to really just put striations, but they're just kind of more like blobs, all right? Then I'm just going to drop that cut. All right, then I'm going to come in here with my beach sand kind of same thing. Little blobs ever so often. So why blobs? Well, because I don't want it just to be a bunch of lines. Okay, I want it to be more when I use my hand to spread it out. I want the colors to be kind of in larger sections. All right, so that was the beach sand. Oop, there again, I set it in. All right, here's our white opaque. And I'm not, now I'm just kind of filling in a little bit. It doesn't look like you have enough epoxy. Well, I did, what's two times four? Two times four is eight. Who do three, we appreciate? Three times eight is 24. That's how many ounces of epoxy I have. At least that's what I hope I have because a friend of mine named Evan visited me earlier, mm. and I've been talking with Evan for a while, and I lost track of time. So when I was mixing, I may not have been paying attention. That's possible. So I'm going to blame everything tonight on my good friend Evan. And I think Keith and Clara know Evan as well. Um, pretty cool dude, I have to say. All right. Poor Evan does get blamed for a lot of stuff because he's kind of a funny dude. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of scrape my cups and at this point it really doesn't matter. All right, so now we've got my translucent color. You know what I'm gonna do actually? I'm gonna come in with my clear. All right, now I'm just gonna start filling in everything with my clear. And again, the reason we do clear is because we want to create depth, all right? So another reason I'm kind of flustered today and had kind of a tough day is I was on the phone today for over an hour with my good friend, Keith McGinnis. Now, Keith McGinnis and I usually talk about epoxy because we love epoxy. But tonight, or today, Keith McGinnis and I, we talked about insurance. 
And I don't know about y'all, but I'd rather have my teeth pulled than talk about insurance. As far as what I need for my business, for the ranch, for my house, for my cars, all of those things. And I found out that what I thought I had was good was terrible. So anyway, by the time I got off the phone with him, I had a headache. So that's when I called Evan. Alrighty, so we've got all of our colors down. Now the secret sauce. Look at that, y'all. And I do want to have this secret sauce in kind of puddles. But I don't want them to be as big of puddles as I have some of my other color. Just because I, I want it to kind of just blend in there just a little bit. And be more of an accent. Than just a really big blob, I guess you'd call it. And you know, I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave a little bit in the cup. Because, you know, we always need to leave a little bit in the cup. You never know. All right, torch it a little bit. Now, the reason I torch before I start spreading with my hand is because it warms it up just a bit. It's kind of cool in here. We actually had a front come in today and it's been downright cold. Now, cold as in Texas cold, not cold as in y'all's kind of cold if you live up north. So don't judge me, just agree with me. How about that? All right, so I'm just kind of spreading this color out using my hands. Definitely doesn't look good at this point. Nope. Why, well, did somebody say it doesn't look good? Me. Oh, well, hush your mouth. All right, we're gonna warm it up a little bit. And it is a little bit thicker now because I have let it set in the cup a little bit. But that's okay because it actually helps us on these lives because a lot of times I do let my my product set up to, set up a little bit before I kind of go to the next step. And now if you have big blobs like this and you want to kind of soften them, take your fingers and kind of use your fingertips and get down in there and you can kind of soften out those areas a little bit. Like right here, I have a really hard line. If I take my fingers and kind of scratch down in there and then move it with my hand, I can kind of soften that look. All right. Get your edges, get your edges. Take that. Now I'm gonna take that and where I have a lot of the white, I'm gonna pick it up and move it. As soon as I heat that up, my epoxy becomes a little more fluid and it's easy to work with. Now that's kind of a double-edged sword. If you use a lot of heat, guys, it will set up a little quicker on you, okay? So by using a lot of heat, torching it a lot, you are kind of shortening your open time. All right, now, what I wanted you guys to see, let me torch it, the whole thing. What I wanted you guys to see is how this shooting star just, it, it just takes this piece to the next level. I'm not sure that the camera can even catch it, but let us know. Now also, Kenny does not have the, um, the what do you call that thing, Kenny? The, the lens thing? Yeah. What is it called? The polarized lens. The polarized lens because I wanted him to start off without the lens on there 
and then we're going to put the lens on there and see if you guys like it with or without. All righty. So this is beautiful. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of alcohol. I'm just spritzing it with clear alcohol. And all that's going to do is just give me a little bit of a design pattern. Just, just a little bit. If you don't like it, like little certain areas, if that leaves too many dents for you guys, all you have to do is run your hand back through whatever area you don't like. Okay? I just liked it that it just kind of gives a little bit. What are we doing? Pointing at the... Right there? Yeah. Pointing at the uh, shooting star? Yeah. Okay, that's the shooting star. Isn't it pretty? Okay, so if you want a really subtle, creamy marble, this is really pretty. But now I'm going to show you how we're going to take it to the next level. All right, now this is the um, art coat that we're using. All righty, now I'm going to come in with our amazing quick coat. <clears throat> the amazing quick coat is the regular quick coat from Stone Coat with added UV protection. Alrighty, so what happened is Alumalite came in, you know what, I'm going to make quite a bit of this. Let me see how much I have. Alumalite came in and took the Stone Coat countertop recipe or the formula and made a quick coat. So when I say quick coat, I ain't kidding y'all. This stuff, I would not want to do a whole countertop with it unless you have help because it cures pretty quickly. I could do a color coat finish and I have and I can flood coat that within four to six hours. So it is an amazing product. But hint I the name. hint the name. Amazing. And quick coat. Very quick. So if you want to do, say, a vanity, say a vanity that's this size, a bathroom vanity. Easily can do you can do it. As long as you have everything ready, you're doing a design that doesn't require a lot of manipulating because it will set off quick, especially if you have it in a bigger container. Oh, and so tell them about the, not the drill. Yes, and you do not want to use a drill when you're using the Amazing Quick Coat. Because the Amazing Quick Coat is quick, it's thicker than, say, our Art Coat. So It will set it off faster. Yes, and it will set it off a lot faster. Um, and it'll I mean, you also, can, but you just better know that it's gonna. Well, but the thing I don't like using the um, the drill paddle is because it does because it's thicker. It entrains more air bubbles, and because it is thick, the air bubbles can't release as quickly because uh, it's curing so fast. All right, so now what I'm coming in here with is the just resin bright gold. So I know a lot of you guys have been looking for um, the 007 and we've been out of it. We, it's been back ordered from the manufacturer, but the bright gold is going to be your next best friend and I can use it either way in conjunction or instead of. Now I'm going to go <laughs> one step further. <gasps> what? Yes. You don't say. I do say. I'm going to take my bright gold and I'm going to come in with diamond dust. Okay. That's not diamond dust. Hello. Nope. Gold dust. Okay. So gold dust and I'm going to actually kind of load my gold dust in there. Now gold dust is not as big as say um, a glitter. All righty. It's a smaller particle than glitter. But it is a bigger particle than our gold mica uh, 
powder, all righty? So I'm really adding a lot in here. Okay, now, you won't, you won't really be able to see it that much in a cup, but when I lay it out on the um, surface, it really does look cool. All right, so we're gonna do a couple of things here. One, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna lay down a vein. All right, so there's gonna be a couple of ways to do this. Now you can see, and I don't care that it's, it's kind of dripping because I'll tell you what we're gonna do here in just a minute. So I'm just laying it, kind of laying it down and I'm gonna give it a chance to kind of sink a little bit, but because it's a quick coat, it's gonna start curing a little bit faster and my vein is going to really kind of stay tight. It's not gonna spread out as fast. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna come in here and put more of a bigger area down and then I'm gonna take my handy dandy little whatever this thing is, it's a silicone brush or something, Clary gave it to yeah. me. I'm gonna take that brush and I'm gonna kinda move it and work it in to my epoxy. Because I want a bigger area of that and I want that to just kinda float and blend out. Okay, all right, I love that. We'll do that again over here. Put kind of a quite a bit, and I can already tell this is starting to soak up and thicken up. And, I'm, and it's literally just the weight of this brush. I'm just letting the weight of this brush. So is that really a brush? That's what it's called. It's called a silicone brush thing. I don't know, that's what they told me. But I love it. And I don't know why I haven't been using it more. It kind of gives me the feel of a Bondo spreader, but the Bondo spreader is so wide, it's kind of hard for me to be able to um, manipulate it the way I want to manipulate it. All right, I'm gonna come back in here with a few more little veins ever so often. Come back over here. All right, now I'm gonna take my little handy dandy little thing here and I'm gonna just play with it a little bit. Push my gold down because bright gold has a tendency to kinda of wanna sit and float on top. And I'm gonna kinda of take it, make these veins look a little more, uh, I guess, organic by kinda of coming off See how I kind of drag through this big area? And then I break off. And just soften out those veins. Kind of pull them over. And make them look just really more natural. And by having big veins and little veins and then some big wide areas, you really do get some neat look. Now, what I also want to do, almost like a swipe technique, I'm going to come over here and pull some of this um, beige, and I'm going to kind of pull it over the top of my gold. See how that pulled it in a little bit? I don't know if y'all can see that or not. And by continuing to just kind of very lightly drag, I'm taking that vein and I'm softening it and pulling it through the piece. Oh, wow. Now, you'll notice I'm not using a lot of heat on this, guys. And the reason is I don't want my gold to sink. And if I start adding a lot of heat because I have that gold dust in there, and that dust is a, is a heavier particle, if I start adding a lot of heat and using my torch and really torching it a lot, all of those particles are gonna sink down. And I don't want that to happen. Now I'm gonna torch really quickly 
but you'll notice how fast I go over the surface. And all that's doing is breaking up a little bit of those surface bubbles. Now, because we talked about the quick coat curing a lot faster, you will notice there'll be a little more micro bubbles in that area. All right, now I wanna show you a really fun thing that Kenny and I did earlier. Um, I don't have any drips. Yikes, no drips. Well, you know what? I'm gonna, gonna take it from the cup. All right, so I have a little bit of this, <clears throat> uh, what is this stuff called? Oh, beige? Yeah. <laughs> it's not beach sand. It, okay, well, I'm fixing to get some though. I'm gonna make a little baby dirty pour, pour right now. I'm gonna take this beach sand, I'm gonna take my beige, and I am actually sticking it in my gold, and I'm gonna take my... So I, tell them why the reason why you used... The, the quick coat? coat? The reason why I use the quick coat is I want that quick coat to set up faster than the rest of my piece and because I don't want my veins to move. Okay, if you could do this with art coat, just know that the art coat, because it's not a quick coat, those veins are gonna really spread out a lot quicker. Now, if you don't have the amazing quick coat and you wanna do this, mix you up some art coat, but let it sit in your cup till it starts to kind of get thick, all righty? then basically you can kind of do the same thing. All right, so now we've made a little baby, oop, I forgot my white spray paint. We made a little baby dirty pour. And I'm gonna come in with a little bit of white spray paint. And I sprayed a little bit of that white spray paint in the cup. And then I'm gonna take a stick and I'm gonna do one, two stirs. Uh, I did not mix it. Three. Okay, three. All right, who's counting? No, do, do three. Nope. All right, now I'm gonna come out and we're gonna- Oh, that's not mixed enough. Yes. All right, now I'm gonna come and do a little pour. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint. All right, take my little this thing and we're gonna spread it out. Just my little um, brush, my little this, my little that. We're gonna move it just a little bit. Drag that over the top. I can already tell that my quick coat's starting to set up. Push that over the edge. Now see how that white is kind of run inside of that. Now we're going to take some alcohol and we're going to spritz it and look how it makes it look 3D. Look at that. See how that kind of just sits there on top and it this vein looks like it's just down deep as if it was in a rock. Now you can't wait too long to do that because your quick coat starts setting up and it won't react with your alcohol. But this actually, because the quick coat was starting to get set up and you hit that with alcohol, it looks like there's chunks, actual chunks of gold in there. Let's hit this piece over here again and see if we can get it to do something. All right, can you see it? Yeah. Oh, my thing's stuck. Helps if you squeeze the trigger. Ah, still yeah, squeezing it. Now, see how that looks like almost little chunks of gold in there? And the reason it's doing that is because it's starting to set up a lot faster. Now, if you don't like how it reacts on this outside, just take your fingers, because you're still fluid enough. I like those though. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad you like them. I did it just for you. How about that? All righty, I love this. Wow, I love it. 
Okay, now, I did do a lot of stripes here because I was kind of trying to show y'all how to do it. And you said there was not going to be a lot of stripes. Did I say that? Yeah. I don't think I said that. I might have said that, but the reason it's so stripey uh -huh. is because I was trying to show everybody out there in YouTube land how to make the veins. So if I were doing this as a full counter, no guys, that I would be not doing as many stripes. How okay? many stripes would you do? I'm a. I'm just asking. I don't just know. maybe there's somebody's <laughs> wondering like, what I, if if you were gonna do stripes, what would be like the minimum amount? There would not be because I would not do stripes because then we have a golden zebra. So what I would do is I would look at the length of my countertop and I would strategically place my veins and my bigger areas and really pay attention to what I'm doing. And the most important thing is guys, you have got to step back and look at your piece. I see so many sample boards or countertops that are done. And then when you step back and look at it or even take a picture of it, it looks very stripy. But we don't realize that when we're creating because we're focused right here. We're like focused in, in each little area. We never take the time to step back and look at the whole piece. Because if I did a kitchen and I did all these stripes, I would definitely have landed the golden zebra because it would be wild and it would be very, very busy. You could call it striping, no striping. Uh, mm, or that. Um, so um, just be very, very aware when you're putting veins in and um, don't be patterned. Don't put a vein here, 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 and here. Really make it very random. How random? So, so random. random. So, all righty guys, I love this. I love the technique. I don't necessarily love this pattern as far as where my gold stripes are, but I love the technique of using the amazing quick coat with that gold. I love putting the gold uh, diamond, I mean the gold dust with the real, nope, the gold dust with the, what's it called? Rich gold, bright gold, bright gold by Just Resin. Um, so yeah, I love this. Okay. All right, so. Okay, we're gonna do a few announcements well, and then we're on. gonna go gonna show. I gonna do a flyover without the lens and then one with the lens. You're so smart. And then see. Okay, perfect. Let's do that. See what the test out. Okay, Let's, so everybody pay attention. We're going to go. So here's. Look at this, guys. Oh, my gosh. Look. And that's staying because it's quick coat and that pattern's staying. I love it. So the main thing is that you could see the reflection in the background. Can y'all see it? I'm still playing. Y'all just ignore right. me. So now, now it's on. Let's see if I can. So look, there it is. And then I'm just rolling it, and it's gone. At, see if it changes the color, guys. Do y'all do y'all notice the change in the way it makes the color look? I'm just gonna play with this while y'all are just looking. I'm just gonna play. Um, can y'all tell? Does it change the color of the piece and what y'all saw? I like that. Ooh. So right now, guys, I'm just so getting... Go ahead. I don't really see a change in it. In the color? Yeah, but you're looking on the phone. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering what it's looking like on... 
Like if someone's watching this on a TV. Yeah, something different. I don't know. Yeah, let us know what it looks like. And I, all I'm doing right now is I want to try one more thing. I'm getting rid of what was in my cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this now. And I'm curious to see what happens since I have Art Coat and Quick Coat curing at two different rates. So let's, let's see what happens. So It does seem like it's more vivid, like it what? shows up. With the, with the lens? Yeah, with the lens on, it really, like you could see, you could see Watch all you, the I'm dimensions. Watch out, I'm going to twitch that right there. Well, that's good, then that's good to know. I just didn't want it to change the color. All right, so let me, let me torch this, Kenny. Go ahead. And then I'm going to tilt it. So by torching it, we're going to make it more fluid. And I want to see if what happens when I tilt it. All right, so I'm going to kind of tilt it at a diagonal. Let's move in some. So if one other really cool thing about this amazing quick coat is if you do small projects, like Lazy Susans or tumblers. It is amazing for tumblers, if any of you guys do tumblers, because you can literally put your color coat down and come back in just a few hours and put your flood coat or another layer of color coat. Now, one thing you would not want to do, oh wow, look. Let me wait till I quit. So what's happening is my quick coat is moving, but not near. It's moving a lot quicker than my the quick coat is moving. Oh, I love that. So remember how I told you if you use a lot of heat, it's going to cause the particles to sink? Well, that's exactly what happened. And I love it because as it sank and I tilted, we got some color shifting going on right here. See that color shift? It's almost like a shadow. And that looks super natural. or I should say very natural, not supernatural. All right, so I think I'm gonna do a couple more things. You know what, I can't walk away, I can't stand it. Let's do this. Let's fracture a little bit in a couple of places. Tell me when you're ready and I'm gonna spray a little bit of spray paint, Kenny. All right, hold on, I'm trying to. You ready? So I'm going to go spray just a little bit of spray paint right here. Some of these areas that I want to kind of just soften a little bit. And then I'm going to come over with Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. That's kind of neat. Cool. Just gave it a little bit different look. Neat. Okay, I like that. Alrighty. Let's do, as soon as Kenny does his flyover. What do you think, guys, of the flyover? Y'all like that? So I'm kind of not liking that white spray paint. So I, if, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that white spray paint. I think my quick coat, I mean my, um, my art coat has set up a little bit too much to get the effect I was going for at this point. So I'm a little bit, because you, you got to 
think. I mixed this up. Ten before. No, I was I was mixing back there. I had it in, I had it mixed up at twenty till, and then I started to put it in the colors in the cups. So this product is an hour old. The the quick coat is an hour old right now. So that's why I'm not quite getting the uh, fracturing effect that I that I really really wanted. But it's fun. I'm loving, guys. I'm gonna start doing this all the time. Look at the depth that this gold quick coat, because it's staying together. It's not moving. Everything else is softening out, but my quick coat is staying very, very together. And I love how the alcohol makes it, I mean, it almost looks like a thick gold leaf, almost. Really pretty. All right, so we, we've got about 20 minutes. What I think I'm going to do is, um, where's my drink? I'm going to go sit on a stool, and we're going to do a little bit of Q&A because I've had a lot, a lot, a whole lot <laughs> of customer service calls. So I want to discuss with you guys, if that's okay with you, I want to discuss with you guys uh, some questions that you may have, okay? Uh, I'm going to get a chair, actually. While I do that, you want to take them over there and show them our yeah we can our show little all, our little um, project that we're doing with artists till death uh erica it's actually her project we're just kind of helping her out so so this <coughs> is going to be a a coffee table that's going to be full of glass and uh one thing that i did use it was very easy and i just use the 2p10 and I glued these little uh, blocks down onto the, what is it, contact paper? Mm -hmm. Right, so we put contact paper down first. You could see the difference right here. And then, we, and then we just glued these down. And then I made the circle the all mold. the way around. So you could see that. We basically built a mold. Just built an easy mold. And then I just siliconed it on the inside and the outside. And then on the splice, I just taped it together. Um, we did make it a little bit bigger. Um, so then we have room for uh, sanding purposes. Okay, so let's take them back to tell them from the very beginning kind of what this is. So it's going to be the whole table is going to be like a deep pour. All right. So we created, we as in Kenny, <laughs> created this, this um, uh, mold and we used for this, this uh, thin wrap, it's masonite. It's the same right. thing that if you've ever been to my studio, it's the same thing that we have on our floor that we seam together with ram board tape and it protects our flooring. Um, it's very thin, it's also the material that we make our sample boards out of. Um, Here's let's one. see. Here's one right here. So the back of it's very rough. Okay. The front of it, obviously, this has epoxy on it. But this is what we make our sample boards in our class and on some of the sample boards because it's very lightweight and we can ship them once you're done with them. But um, they make great sample boards because they're light. Um, but that's what we started off with is made that over and it's just a piece of MDF that we laid it down on and we put the contact paper that we got and this is the thick clear contact paper. We got it at Home Depot. Uh, and then what we did or what actually Kenny and Erica did is they came in and they poured how many gallons is this? Four, Four gallons. gallons of art coat that's very thin, okay? You never want to pour four gallons of art coat thick because of the heat. But because we poured it very, very, very thin, it's just going to be a barrier 
Um, so probably this is almost like doing three ounces per square foot. Okay, yeah, that's that's about much. that's about what we're at. Um, now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these glass um, pieces of glass and we're gonna mix it in. And Erica has all the how she wants to do it. We're just I'm just helping her. But anyway, it's, there's gonna be glass in here, and I'm not really sure even the whole process yet because it, like I said, it's in Erica's head. And she the the main thing is I just wanted to show y'all right. that there's a simple way to do this and we did had zero leaks as you can see we can walk around there was zero leaks on this and uh, it worked out really good yeah so a cheap way easy way to make you a mold you could do river tables like this. Uh, but the reason we use this particular is because we wanted art. that curve. Yeah. Oh, God. I just had. Uh, so, yeah. So there it is. So anyways, so we'll go back over here, Rhonda. I'm sure, I'm sure Erica will be doing the whole reveal of the whole table once it's done. Uh, like I said, I really don't even know what the whole, the whole thing. I lost my notes. You left them over there. Where? Sorry, guys. I'm looking for my notes. Oh, yeah, they are. Okay. Here, I'm going to sit right here. Uh, no. Why? Because this is mine. Well, Stendy, he won't share his stool with me. All righty, here we go. Well, can you back up so I can sit up here? Where are you going to? Well, I'm not going to sit behind there. I won't be able to see anybody. Okay. Ha. <sighs> Y'all get behind the scenes here. Okay. All right. Q&A really quick. Actually, it's mostly just A's. Not a whole lot of Q's because I already have them on here. All righty. First of all, we're running a promo from yesterday through April 21st, and it's for tax season. It's going to be 10% off all Stone Coat products and supplies plus free shipping, plus same day shipping when you order before noon. All right, so I can ship to anywhere in the US. I cannot ship to Alaska. I can't ship to Canada yet, working on that. And I can't ship anywhere else international yet. And it has all to do with regulations on putting the product on an airplane. So can't do that. All right. I'm getting a lot of people ask me, calling me very frustrated that they can't get in touch with anyone at Stone Coat Countertop. All right, so guys, I don't work for Stone Coat. <laughs> I hate to tell you, I don't work for Stone Coat. I know the people there and I do have a little bit of pool there, but I Very have little. zero pull with their customer service, okay? So it, they know it's an issue right now, and they're working very, very hard. They have some key people now in that department, and they are working really hard to get their customer service back up to where it needs to be. Meanwhile, don't hesitate calling me. I enjoy working with you guys. I enjoy answering questions, but there's just one of me, okay? So if you call me and I don't answer, or Leslie says I'm not available, I promise you, I promise you, I will call you back, okay? I just can't promise you when I'll call you back, but I will. Same goes with emails and Facebook posts and Messenger posts and every other way that social media can meet me. I will answer them as soon as I can. Actually, most of the time I answer my emails. I start about 10 o'clock at night and I finish around 1 a.m. That's the only time I have to answer questions. And it's kind of my wind down time. So I really do enjoy sitting there and being able to um, communicate with you guys. But no, I'm not Stone Coat. I'm not Stone Coat, okay? So don't get mad at me. Okay, UTC. That seems to be the topic of everyone's conversation here the last whatever. All right, so I had a phone call today. I had several phone calls today, actually, all talking about UTC. And they all had an issue with 
it being um, too textury, all righty? And setting up different than what they were used to. So I had one person actually get upset with me because, wow, well, about fell off my stool, um, because I couldn't tell them exactly how much water to use. Now, all of you know that I have a PDF with the ratio of water to UTC that we use in our business every day. Keith McGinnis uses it. Mitch Quist uses it. They're actually going to start putting that formula on the back of UTC bottles. Okay? It is a very good formula. But I tell everybody when they call me on my videos, everything else, you have to take your environment into consideration. You can't just say, this is what it says, this is what I'm going to do, and pour that and expect the same results if you pour in February in Pennsylvania or if you pour in February in Texas or July in Florida. Temperature, humidity matters, guys. If I didn't learn anything else while we were in uh, Hawaii last week, I learned that because we learned that high humidity and the heat actually slowed the process down of anything that had water in it. Our concrete mixture, we did a concrete overlay, that actually uh, cured much slower than what we anticipated. And so we had to kind of do an audible on our time frame of when we did the concrete as opposed to when we did the epoxy. Now what we also learned, being in high humidity and high heat, cut our open time of our art coat quite a bit. So the high humidity, high heat lengthened the time it took for our concrete to dry but it shortened our cure time for our epoxy. Also, same thing with our UTC. It did not react at all like it reacts here at my house. So we adjusted the water a little bit and that's something that you guys need to do. And if you have not watched the live that we did in Hawaii, it's on uh, the Stone Coat Countertop uh, YouTube channel go watch that live. It is bona fide live. We were all over the place talking. There's a lot of great Q&A in hours. there. It was two hours long. So if you're not doing anything and you just want to watch something, there's a lot of good information in there. But that's what I wanted to let you know is that temperature and humidity makes a difference. Let me know at any time if I need to like answer a question that's super important, Kenny. Uh, also, don't use a, a mixing paddle when you're mixing your UTC. Explain what UTC is real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. UTC is the ultimate top coat. It comes in two sheens. It comes in a uh, matte sheen and it comes in a gloss. And it is a modified polyurethane roll on material. It is not epoxy. Okay. You apply it a minimum of 24 hours after your flood coat. Alrighty, so your epoxy has to be 100% cured before, or dry, I should say, before you put the UTC. So let me get through this really quick and then we'll start taking some answers on the UTC. Alright, so don't use a paddle. Don't, don't speed mix that product because you will entrain so much air in that product by using a mixer that when you go to roll it out, the bubbles cannot pop fast enough compared to the amount of time it takes for that product to start setting up. You have about 15 minutes of open time, that's it, before you start rolling it and you start seeing texture. So um, that's a no-no, don't do that. Um, now, if you, start, if you have texture, and there's all kind of reasons why you can have texture, but if you've been to my class, uh, if you've seen our work, Keith McGinnis's work, um, there's so many out there too that also have perfected the Ultimate Top Coat. It can be ultra smooth, 
I want to tell you that it can be ultra smooth and there's plenty of people that have seen it in my shop. They've actually put their hands on it and it's very, very smooth. But if you overwork that product, meaning you roll it too much or you put too little product or you wait too long and you keep working it, I'm telling you guys you're going to get texture, but it's not the end of the world. Let me tell you what to do. If once it dries, you run your hand across it and you're just not happy with that textury feel, wait about four days, four to five days, again, depending on your temperature, depending on your humidity, and you can take 10,000 grit sandpaper. Um, Kenny, will you look under on the back side of that big table in that drawer? There should be some 10,000 grit sanding pads in those white things. Um, is it the Merca pads? No, it's not the Merca pads. Um, but the, it's big like the Merca pads. Okay, so I'm going to put a disclaimer on this. Using the 10,000 grit wet sand, you have to wet sand it, will slightly change the sheen. I may not even be using that word right. It's not actually a sheen it's change. It takes the, the highs It takes down. the highs off. Okay, so in certain light... Not in all light, in certain light, and on darker colors more. If you look at it just right, you may see a little bit of what I call flattening of the surface. Um, I did a white kitchen just recently, a white marble. Uh, Keith McGinnis can chime in on this. And I sanded the whole thing with this 10,000 grit. Wet, I did a wet sand, and it came out so smooth it is incredible how smooth it comes out. And Keith said, Rhonda, I can't even tell you did it. It was so incredibly smooth. Um, he, and he looked every which way and he could not tell that it had been done. Darker colors, a black, if you do it on a black and it's in a certain light, you may see a little bit of a sheen change. So like always, I'm gonna tell you, do a sample board. If you've already got it on your countertops and you think you may have to sand it all off, try this first. It may be the best solution and it may keep you from having to sand the whole thing off, but do it in an inconspicuous place first. See if you like it and then you can do the whole thing. But the key is it has to be done wet. I actually use the liquid smooth instead of water when I wet sand it and I'm telling you, it comes out like a baby's butt. It is so, so, so slick. I love it. Okay, uh, set your expectations. Know what you're doing before you put your UTC down. Don't, don't do a whole countertop if you've never mixed up UTC ever and you've never done a sample board because I'm telling you, there's a learning curve. It is a very hard product to remove because it's durable and that's what you want. You don't want something that I can just barely sand and it come off. So that's what you don't want. All right, you said you had some questions? Hand sand or machine sand? Oh, machine for the 10,000? Definitely use an orbital, but don't use an orbital on your edges, all right? Hand do your edges if you can, all righty? Because you can burn through. Even though it's 10,000 grit, you can still burn through your edges. Next. And make sure it's at least four to five days old, okay? If not, it'll gum up your sander and you'll see little pigtails, okay? Next, okay. All right, so another thing that I'm gonna tell you guys uh, about the UTC is because it's a chemical reaction, all righty? And it, re it, it, it does require some measuring, it does require uh, different elements to all come together temperature, humidity, summer, winter, whatever it is. There are easy DIY products out there that I can tell you, hey, just open the top, pour it, and roll it out. I can give you a handful of those that you can use every day. The problem is those products are not as durable as the UTC. The UTC, I'm telling you, is incredibly, incredibly durable. Um, but it does require some practice, and it does require setting your expectations. So if you have any questions, if you've never done the UTC, 
Um, Clara, I don't, I didn't send you that link, but uh, there is a link on my YouTube. There's a video on my YouTube channel, and it's called The Ultimate Guide to the Ultimate Top Coat. Please, guys, if you are going to do the ultimate top coat, watch that video three times. Watch it, follow the directions, use the recommended rollers that we use, and I'm telling you, you can get it to come out really, really nice and really, really smooth. All right, so enough of that. But y'all can call me if you have any more questions. Okay, flood coat. This is a question, I got four of these questions within an hour and a half of each other. Do I have to flood coat before I put the UTC on? Okay, here is my uh, thought process on that. We always recommend that you put a flood coat over your color coat, especially if you're doing a countertop. Alrighty, now for several reasons. Reasons are one, when you add paint and dye and mica powders and diamond dust and all of those things in epoxy, you're actually compromising the integrity of what that product was like when it was designed. All right, because we've added all these things in there that when it was developed, it wasn't supposed to have that in there. So now we've compromised our FDA food uh, safety rating, we've compromised our heat resistance, we've compromised our scratch resistance, all of that. So by putting a flood coat over the top, we brought all of that back to its original intent, what the epoxy was originally made to do. So by doing that, we brought back our heat, our scratch, food safety, all of that, okay? And that's a high traffic area. Then, if you decide to put the UTC, now you have a buffer. You have your color coat, you have your flood coat, which is just clear epoxy. Same epoxy that you use for your color coat is the same thing. It's just clear. There's nothing in it except maybe a little bit of diamond dust. Maybe a little bit. Now you have that, okay? Then you're gonna come over the top with the ultimate top coat. If something happens and you have to sand that ultimate top coat, now you have that flood coat as a barrier and a protector of your color coat. So you're not gonna sand down into your color coat, all right? Also, if you have UTC on there and 10 years later, five years later, whatever, they call you up and say, hey, my grandkids took a knife and they scratched the heck out of my countertops. Now we can go sand that UTC. We know we have a buffer of our uh, clear coat, our flood coat. We can reapply, okay? Now, there are times when we don't do a flood coat. Technically, you don't have to, okay? Technically, it's going to still work if you don't have a flood coat. Shower panels. When I do a dirty pour on shower panels, because I have a lot of material, six, eight, 10 ounces per square foot on my dirty pours, on my shower panels. Technically, I don't have to put a flood coat because I really don't plan on dancing on my shower walls. Or eating. Or eating on my shower walls, okay? So I can go over that dirty pour with the ultimate top coat. I can even install those shower panels without the ultimate top coat because I'm not so much worried about the durability of it unless you're gonna be in a high traffic shower area where you're clean, you have hard water, you've gotta really scrub to get that hard water off, then most definitely I'm going to put the ultimate top coat. Uh, or I want a matte finish. Obviously if I want a matte finish, I'm gonna put the ultimate top coat. So technically there is an argument, do I have to use a flood coat on that? Now our job in Hawaii, if you watch the live, we did a dirty pour. I think we used eight or nine ounces. Nine. Nine ounces per square foot. We had a lot of product on that. But we had it scheduled every single day what we were gonna do there. And because our concrete didn't set up, it pushed us back a whole day. 
So we lost a day of working. So we set the expectations. We talked to the homeowner and we said, look, we're not going to have time to put a flood coat. It is your decision. Do you want us to put a flood coat and have your contractor do the ultimate top coat? Or do you want us to skip the flood coat and put the ultimate top coat? We set those expectations. We gave her all the information that she needed as a homeowner to make the decision. And she chose for us to do the ultimate top coat. And we did, and it came out absolutely amazing. And it is gonna be very, 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 very durable. And we're okay with that. Um, so that's your question about, do I have to put a flood coat? Any questions from anybody? Is anybody even out there anymore? Yeah, or am I talking to there. myself? <laughs> okay, that's my biggest fear is I'm not talking to myself. Yeah, you're just talking to yourself. I know. Actually, to me and I'm not listening. You're not listening? Okay, well that's normal. You never listen to me. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay now i'm done with my on my soapbox uh any questions ask me some questions guys we've i'm gonna give you guys about 10 minutes or so 15 minutes and we'll we'll ask some questions anybody anybody huh oh i had alcohol on my cup any questions popping up there I'm sure Erica, I mean, not They're Erica, Clara and Vamp. I was figuring uh, Vamp and Erica were answering quite a few things. Okay, guys. So, um, I guess that's it. I guess, yeah. I guess we have. Oh, my gosh. Stormy is amazing. She's so sweet. I think what we're going to do, if you guys saw the post that we did on my uh, RK3 Design Facebook page, we're going to uh, do our What's Up Saturday or Show Me Saturday. We're only going to do it once a month. And I think I'm going to start like a, like a have coffee with me or something on a Saturday morning, which will basically every Saturday we'll talk about something else. And we may take questions from the week before. We may drive around in the Polaris and I'll let you guys see me feed the cows and the horses and go see Stormy. Every, it'll be different. And some days it'll be 10 minutes and some days it'll be an hour and a half. Who knows? It'll all depend on you guys. But I think I'm going to start that um, probably this Saturday. Uh, I will let you know. We'll be posting it. If you are not a member of our uh, RK3 Design Epoxy Insiders, put that link on there for me if y'all don't mind, um, join Alrighty, we love to have you. It is a amazing group. There's so many talented people in that group that can answer questions. If you can't get in touch with me, answer questions, post your work, good and bad. That's how you learn. Uh, so we highly recommend that you join that group. And come join our classes, guys. We, guys, we also are running a promotional that will end, I believe, the 18th. 15% off our 101 classes. Now that's any 101 class through the end of the year, but you have to register or put a down payment on that class before April 18th. So um, if you don't, the reason people are getting these and they're getting these notices is that they've signed up for our newsletter on our website, rk3designs.com. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll get all these promos uh, and an email we do we don't spam you guys with a bunch of emails I think we do one email a week unless we have something special to um, talk to y'all about okay so is that it all right thank you for joining us it's been a day Evan says hello and uh, y'all have a good evening oh tell Anna. Oh. oh tell who thank you Anna uh, she liked the video so I'm glad you liked it. Oh, yeah, y'all. Check it out. Kenny is the star this week on our uh, video. We released it Monday, and he's teaching you guys how to do a seam, how to seam two pieces of MDF together. Um, we teach that in our pro class. We teach that in our fabrication class. And if you have any questions, let us know. So, all right, guys. Love you. And we will see you next week. Remember, don't be scared. Move forward.
and be creative. Bye. Adios.